there is any genre of games that is easy to get right, it's most certainly the minimalist puzzle game. Ever since the launch of Braid back in 2008, many developers have taken a crack at copying its basic formula and most of them have succeeded. I have played, reviewed, and recommended more solid indie puzzlers than I can count, leading me to develop a love and appreciation for those games that don't require boatloads of skill or dedication to get through. Arranger, a role puzzling adventure, fits neatly into the mold of that minimalist puzzle game. While it does have more going on with its art style than simple shapes and lines, the gameplay concept is remarkably easy to grasp and pushed to its absolute limits through the imagination of its developers. Much like a classic Nintendo platformer, Arranger doesn't overstay its welcome, and it fully exploits the very core of its concept. Needless to say, it's a very good time. As the official description for Arranger reads, Arranger follows the story of Gemma, a small town misfit on a journey of self-discovery. Venturing out beyond her stiflingly cozy confines, she finds an inspiring world, but also one ruled by fear and a strange, immovable static force. Can she disrupt a culture of stagnation and find a place to fit into it? That's a succinct and perfectly summarized way to hook you into this puzzle game. The general gameplay works on a grid system, where players will move a single tile at a time and shift the other tiles horizontally or vertically depending on how they are moving. At first, it can be confusing, but the game allows players to move literally everything, so you start to understand very quickly how a ranger will play out. You'll need to reposition not only yourself, but objects in the world to solve puzzles. To aid in the creativity of this concept, certain edges of the grid will wrap around when you or another object touches them, allowing you to not only quickly traverse the game world, but setting up scenarios where an object might require too many steps to move if walking in a more traditional manner. With that said, Arranger's roughly 5 hour story exploits every possible permutation of this concept before the credits roll, including some areas where you cannot move certain objects, giving you ample opportunity to flex your problem solving skills. It's obviously very easy to make comparisons to Braid, as not only is Arranger fairly similar in design philosophy, it has art drawn by David Hellman. Hellman exploded to prominence because of his beautiful work on Braid, and would later illustrate the graphic novel's second quest. While a lot of the same qualities are present, Arranger certainly has a more cheerful color palette, and is overall more cartoony. It looks quite beautiful on a big screen, though the Switch's OLED panel also makes the artwork shine. That same level of quality exists in the sound department as well. The soundtrack, composed by Tomas Batista, is an eclectic mix of softer, more inviting tunes that go heavy on strings to darker, almost industrial tracks that wouldn't sound out of place in the indie game Machinarium. The audiovisual presentation of Arranger is its most accomplished element, giving the game a unique feeling and vibe from other indie puzzlers on the market. That's not to say the gameplay is lacking. It really is just a single idea getting iterated on for a handful of hours before the credits roll. I always like to compare games such as this to Nintendo platformers because they share a lot of similar concepts. Nintendo's very best titles will introduce a gameplay wrinkle and gradually up the difficulty of its execution throughout a level before tossing it out for a new one in the next level. You could say that a Mario level is made up of specific mechanics that could become a full game in their own right, which is often the case with games similar to Arranger. If you stripped away all of the other elements, from story and graphics to sound, Arranger would still be good. It wouldn't blow anyone away, but the marriage of all of these elements is what makes it special. The story, written by Nick Sutner, also deserves a lot of praise for somehow marrying its concept of tile shifting to the complacency most people feel in life. While some of the character dialogue is a bit short and lacking in depth, most of Gemma's journey throughout Arranger almost holds a mirror up to the player in an attempt to get them to try something new. Gemma is unsatisfied with her safe and content life and wants to spice things up. As she shifts around the environment in an effort to help others, she encounters new ideas and viewpoints that she never would have considered had she stayed in bed all day. There's a particular point towards the end of the game where it hit me how stagnant my own life was, and I would probably be one of the many citizens standing in Gemma's way, afraid of the unknown, but secretly dissatisfied with how routine my life had become. In that sense, the only other indie game I could think of that approaches similar territory in its rating is And Yet It Moves. That title was not only developed around the mechanic of shifting its game world around the player, but it got its title from a Galileo quote about the planet being heliocentric. It wanted you to think about your place in the universe, and how you have the power to change your life by doing something as simple as tilting your head. 
a Ranger is much the same. While I'm not certain if Furniture and Mattress LLC's puzzle title will go down as an all-time undisputed classic, that has less to do with the quality of the game and more to do with how far this industry has come in the last 20 years. There have been so many outstanding and genre-defining indie games since the advent of digital distribution that it would take multiple lifetimes to play them all. Even so, a Ranger reminded me that there is more to games than simply how tight they control or how smoothly they run. If you have no story hook to keep a player invested, what's even the point? If you had fun watching that review, why not check out some of the other reviews on my channel and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and all that other YouTube jazz. Until next time, thanks for watching.